Greetings. This is Adam Rafferty, and I'd like to uh, welcome you to this lesson series where I'm going to show you how to play my solo fingerstyle arrangement of the Beatles song, She's Leaving Home. Uh, this is, I would say, for the level of the pieces that I usually do, this is an intermediate level piece. So if you're on the beginner intermediate side, I think you will be able to play this. Okay, it's not one of my hardest pieces. There are a couple of tricky spots. I have a couple notes here that I'm going to just read for you in, in this introduction video. All right, so let's get started. Uh, tuning is drop D tuning. So it's going to be regular tuning, but with your low E string brought down to D. Okay, so E, e B, G, D, A, and then low D. Okay, the timing. Uh, I don't know whether to call this 6-8 time or 3-4 time. Uh, the count is sort of like 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1. But there's also a lot of which can be called 6-8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So doesn't really matter much. Just use your ears, but we're in definitely in some sort of multiple of three. Okay, uh, this song is from the Beatles album, She's Leaving, uh, excuse me, the Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band album. And, um, ah, very important technical note, which I, rather than playing up to this point and then having a problem, uh, one thing you're going to need to be able to grab to play the arrangement the way I play it is a high A. So that's going to be your 17th fret. Okay. It certainly helps if you have a cutaway, but if you don't have a cutaway, it's possible. You might have to figure out how to get your arm, excuse me, around the guitar. Don't worry, we'll, we'll have a close-up of this when we get to this point in the lesson. But you may want to, just to start, check out how you will get up to that note and get a comfortable leverage on that high A. 17th fret. Okay. Now this is, uh, I'm not sure if I said this uh, before, this is a beginner to intermediate level piece, meaning... There's no real fast stuff or high coordination that you'll need. So if you're a beginner, I think you can tackle this. However, you will be all over the fretboard having to play certain things accurately. And you'll, be, you'll find that a lot of the challenge, as in many of my pieces, is landing squarely on the tip of your pinky. Again, I will demonstrate this in the close-up cameras when we get to the lessons. So, and lastly, uh, I want you to know that for years, uh, live and concert, this has usually been my last encore piece after I do all the uh, upbeat uh, audience participation, funk, madness. I usually bring things back down and leave people with this piece. Uh, there are a lot of things in the piece that I have on automatic pilot. So I may show you what my fingers do automatically, and I may also show you other ideas that I've been having lately to possibly work new things in. I have not really investigated this piece a lot. I've just been playing it a lot. Okay, so enough blabbing from me. Let's go grab your guitar and let's start learning the intro of She's Leaving Home. All right. All right. So let's start learning the intro of She's Leaving Home. Now, 
in the intro, I suggest a harmonic thing in, in the arpeggios. There are these beautiful little arpeggios, and there's a suggestion of a harmonic thing that I also use in the song. So let me show you what this harmonic idea is, because it's not from the original Beatles version. It was uh, something that I had come up with in a very fun trio situation uh, that I once played in. Uh, this is called quartal, as in fourths, harmony. So actually, I'm going to play this here. This is just for musical value. This is not how we're going to play it. This is called an interval of a fourth. That's why we call it quartal. And now watch what happens when I sing the melody. Ba, 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 ba. Ba 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 ba. Okay, you see how nice that is. Ba da 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 da. Sounds very modern. Ba 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 ba. So, the intro will suggest that, and as we play the song with the melody, we're also going to weave that in. Okay, so now let's go to the hands. And let me show you. Uh, let me show you the right hand first. We have an arpeggio figure. There's two ways to do it. Okay, it's going to be. You could, if you like playing with your third finger, your A finger, you could go thumb. So I'm going thumb, index, middle, ring, middle, index. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, that's one way to do this figure. Believe it or not, I usually do this a much more primitive way, and something that's a classical guitarist would never do, I often put the index and middle on the top strings. Again, this is just the right hand technique. And I'll go thumb, thumb, index, middle, index, index, which makes no sense at all, but somehow at the end of a gig, that's sometimes how I grab things. So you can, you can mess with either. I'll probably do it with the ring finger here in the studio. Now watch what I'm doing here on the left hand. We're going to do this harmonic figure like this. Second and fourth finger. Then I usually switch to the first and third finger. Okay, and then I think I go to the second finger and the open string. You might be wondering why I do all that switching. It's to try to avoid as many squeaks down here as possible. This does get squeaky, this arrangement with the that sound, uh, but at least by switching fingers. It's a little, at least in my mind, I think maybe it would be a little less squeaky. Okay, so here we go. Watch this. Switch. So I did each one twice, and now I'm just going to do this one once. Now watch what I do. So I went ba 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 ba. Then I end I end on this note. So that's the that's the sort of the the first part of the intro. Let me let me do that again, nice and slow for you. I'd like to add something about this right hand technique. You know, if, if you're a guitarist that's never studied classical guitar, this will be new for you. And if you have studied classical guitar, you probably will have heard your teacher say this. 
If you want to do this with three fingers over here, I want you to find how to play each finger so that your hand moves, doesn't move, or moves as little as possible. So watch the, 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 the back of my hand, and I'm gonna really try to not move it at all. So on the way up, you can plant all your fingers, but then on the way down, just do one at a time. And there's a basic reason for that. If you're, if you're always moving your hand into a different position, maybe to get some leverage for a finger, you're creating a moving target out of the guitar, and it becomes very hard to predict where the strings are going to be. So if you build a habit of keeping your right hand as still as possible, it will help your accuracy. And even after playing for 40 years, this is a basic thing that I have to come back to and maintain uh, like, a, like a trainer would, would watch me in the gym. I have to, I have to maintain that. Okay, so let me uh, show you what happens after this. Um, we've done this. Now watch. Fourth finger, fourth finger, second finger, fourth finger. Now watch what I do. I go third, second. So every time I play this D, I'm, I'm going up because it gets me into the position It gets me there nice and smoothly without having to do a jerky move. That's something uh, I learned from the guitarist Pat Martino. He once did a workshop and he said, watch this. He played one note, and now watch my left hand. Switching fingers. Oops, I didn't do it there. There we go. Can you believe that? He just, he within one fret was switching the, the left hand to get himself into a better position. So that was that was kind of the neat thing. Okay, so here we go, one more time. watch so when, once I'm on the second finger I'm playing first and second hammering on the third and then I do the same thing exactly what we just did but I throng a couple low strings on the figure and I add a note to make it a triad so watch what I do for the second part of the intro I go Move the whole shape down. Same. And then we let that figure stay up in the air before we come up with the come in with the melody. I will now play the entire intro for you start to finish. And I won't talk, I promise. When I just played that, I, I kind of didn't put the low strings exactly in the same place every time. It's not that important. The idea is that the second time, it fills out in the bass and the texture gets a little thicker. Okay, let's go to the next video where I show you how to play.
the first part of the melody. All right, welcome back. So in the last video, I showed you how I played the intro. And in this video, we're going to work on the verse. Okay, so let's backtrack to this, um, to the last part of the intro where I go. Now you'll notice we have a low D string ringing. And in order to focus things, when I go, Before I start the verse, I use my right hand thumb to stop the low D string from ringing. Then the, the first chord we're going to play, let me show you, you're going to need to bar the top two strings. It's going to be a D triad, but we need to bar because we're going to hammer. See, I hammered that. And another thing that I'm doing that, of course, I can't really put on paper, but I can show you on video, is when I play, when I prepare this note on the fourth string, I'm also muting the low A string. So when I play it, I'm hearing only the string that I want to hear, which is the fourth string. Okay. Now one of the cool things, if you're into music theory, uh, one of the very interesting things, and I'm sure Paul McCartney wrote this uh, chord progression, he actually writes progressions that go backwards, cyc cyclically backwards, meaning going a fifth. So he's actually doing a root with a D chord, then an A chord, then an E chord, then a B minor chord, which is, he does a similar thing on Maybe I'm Amazed. Or baby, I'm amazed. I'm not sure what the baby, I'm amazed at the way you na, 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 na. does a similar kind of progression. Okay, so let's actually play the song though. So here we go. You're gonna bar those top strings. Now we're gonna go to a kind of an A minor seven, but watch what I do. So I moved my pinky up, then played the bass. And I try to hold these notes while as I play the high A string, uh, high E string. Okay, now next we're we're going to the uh, an E minor seven. I've shown this in other videos. Now, if you look at my left hand position, I'm going to do this in the center camera. Notice how my pinky is curled and my first finger is out. You're, you're going to need to do that kind of a position to play these notes accurately. You're actually going to have to put your fingers in a certain place rather than just hulking the wrist out. I always or warn against that. You can curl that pinky, get right on the tip. Okay. And then I like to do this over on the right hand with my middle and index. So sorry. That's how you do it. Okay. And then second and third finger, and I'm using only my middle over here, strumming. Okay. Whole thing so far, up to there. Ready? Two, three. Now, I'm going to show you what I usually do, but then I'm going to show you a better way that I think I'm going to switch to. Okay, 
Um, and then I slide up to that. But that's a lot. That's a lot of noise uh, that I'm. I'm starting to feel that I would like to just go like that. Okay. I was thinking that getting the D was important, but I'm going to get the D in the next measure anyway, so it's not really that big a deal. You can experiment. You can either go, or you can just leave. You can use the open string. Now watch what I do. Over here, you got to be really careful on the right hand. We're going to fill in some harmony. We're going to leave the open B string. We're going to go. However, we, we don't want to bump into this string if it's ringing. So we're going to keep our ears. But the day begins is the lyric. And then we want to hear this ringing without bumping into it. So So the main thing that we want to get is those are the outer voices when we do. And if you can get a little bit of the inside, these uh, G and B strings, that's okay. But those those G and B strings are way less important than the bom 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 bom. I hope you understand what I'm saying. The outer voices will tell the story. Inner voices are a bonus. Okay, let's play the verse nice and slow, or I'll play the verse nice and slow up until that point. Ready? Here we go. One more time. Ready? Two. And by the end, I'm holding all those notes down, those notes of an E7 chord. All righty. So that's the first phrase in the verse. Let's go to the next video where I show you how to play the next phrase. All right, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you how to play the next phrase of the verse of She's Leaving Home. This is bars 9 through 16. This is pretty simple, I think. Uh, what you've done up to now is a lot of the complexity, which will require some practice. Um, so here we go. I'm going to just put you right on bar 9. Now, I've simplified this since my original YouTube video. All you got to do is play the G here, and this is how I play it live, because I love the simple sound. I go like this. With all three fingers on the right hand, A, M, I. Okay, let's do that again. So just slide. Then once you get to the seventh fret, pinky. And then we're going to grab that note, G, on the B string. And now check this chord out. Um, pinky. First finger on an E flat. Fourth fret, I know, it's a strange one. And then C sharp there. 
kind of an unstable and jazzy sound. That's it. And then we're, we're repeating. Okay, so that's really simple what, what we're doing here in bars 9 to 16. Uh, this chord, you probably won't find that in a chord book. Um, that's just something that I came up with that was uh, a mix of a jazz chord but with enough of an open finger style sort of sound. Since this is such a, a short a lesson with new material, what I'm going to do now is play the entire verse for you twice because it repeats, meaning the material from the last lesson and this one repeats. I'm going to play it for you straight through so that you can watch the hands, okay, and listen. Here we go. One, two, three, ready, and... Now, second time, watch what it does. Okay, so you're going to have to play this chord once. And then with your pinky, you're going to be going to the 14th fret. So that is the segue into the chorus of the song, which we're going to do in the next video. All right, let's go on to the next video. Alrighty, welcome back. So let's take a look at the chorus of the song or the hook of the song of She's Leaving Home. Now this is uh, pretty tricky because you're going to have to do a lot of switching from playing stuff way up high to way down low. And I suggest that you listen to the Beatles version because I want you to know why I, I did this and I want you to visualize the sound. They very cleverly, uh, it's, the song is about parents lamenting that their daughter, presumably you know an older teenage daughter, has moved out and they're lonely. And so it's this like, crying of the mother's and father's voice. There's a high voice that's supposed to be the mother and a low voice that's supposed to be the father. So, uh, and it's really beautiful. In fact, I'm getting goosebumps just remembering the actual recording of the song. So I suggest check it out. Um, so I'm going to show you how I attempt to pull this off on guitar. Let's backtrack to the last lesson so now I want to explain something when I'm grabbing these high notes I'm gonna to try to also fill in these low notes <laughs> so that the sound retains some kind of a balance okay so that's the mother now watch this Okay, so that first and second finger here, these are playing those funny harmonies that I showed you about. Mm -hmm. 
So now I've made this very clear in the tablature that just a, the top note is changing, but you can, uh, in real life, you can get more expressive. See, I'm even hitting more than one string. It doesn't need to be what's written on the page, which is simply, that's boring, that's too clean. Okay, so really, um, let that, let your guitar with that drop D and all those open strings, let it roar. You don't need to play this loud, but you can listen for a beautiful tone as you strum across those strings. Okay, so, and I'm barring here on the first finger as I do this. And then I'm lifting off the bar there. Okay, once again, from the last section. Okay, now I'd like to give you a technique tip for playing these high notes. Now I learned this when I studied classical guitar. It's one of the greatest little tips. What it is is put your eyes on the fret before you're traveling there and magically your finger will end up in the right place most of the time. So for example, uh, when I'm playing this, second time and I know that I have to get to that high F sharp now my eyes are already on that F sharp 14th fret my eyes are there and my finger can go right there I'm not looking down here at the fifth fret now and going oh my god where do I need to go and have uh, my eyes and fingers and everything collide it's so my my eyes are already up on the high fret and again, I would really recommend take a time out where you're not under the pressure to play the piece of music. Work on your technique so that you can land right on the tip of your pinky. Uh, okay. And then you can slide. You can slide on the treble strings and use them as a guide because they don't squeak. So I do that a lot in this piece. I'm sliding up the treble string, the high E string. All right, getting my second finger ready even and then coming back down. Next part, I come back up. looks a little bit uh, strange the way I've staggered the notes. I'm going again that's the mom singing so oh dago do good do bang Now when I come down, I'm not really playing that whole funny harmony. I'm just grabbing that note. And then, okay. So this funny harmony, the fourths, has been buried in what we're doing. So here it's, there's the C sharp, and then we, let me do that again. Okay, now after this one, is the big leap where we're going to need to get up to the 17th fret. Okay. 
matter of fact, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to stop here since we're nine minutes deep into this segment. And we're going to pick up from the, from the high A in the next lesson video. All right. All right, so in the last video, I walked you through the first part of the chorus with the mother and father voices interchanging. I'd like to just play the first part for you, and then the new material of this lesson is going to start when we get to this high note on the 17th fret. It's an A. Okay? So, here's what we did in the last lesson. Okay. After this point, we're going to go up to the 17th fret using the first finger uh, first string as a guide and you'll have to work on making sure you nail in that note it is not uh, something that you do every day i bet okay now watch what i do when i come back down cuz we're going to let me show you what I do there. Both the uh, second and third and the second fret. Let me explain the musical idea behind this because if you get if you get the music, you'll uh, have an easier time. We're on a D. Melody's going bom, 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 bom. But we need to end up on an F sharp seven chord, which we're in drop D, it would normally be that. But. So I'm, I'm having the bass go bom, bom, bom. A nice little walk up since we're on the D. Okay. And then this open B is making a little suspended sound. Okay. Now we let go of the bass. Okay. And then we're going to slide the third finger up to the seventh fret. Now it gets a little bit easier, so watch what I'm going to do. Only the top three strings. Okay. Then we're going to come back first, second, and third finger, and you're going to you're going to finger this note, but you're not actually going to play it with the right hand. You're just going to play. Like that. Now you might be wondering why bother fingering it if you don't play it. Well, often you'll bump into a string that you you don't intend to bump into, and look at how ugly this would sound if we left it open. Because it's a half step away from this. It's a G natural that doesn't fit the chord. So I I do it like this. And you can even throw a D in if you want. Okay, now watch. That's a little bit tricky. We want to sustain the note on the pinky many years.
want to hold that pinky note as long as it can possibly last. Okay. What I'd like to do now is play you the entire chorus with this interchange of the chords and the very high notes so that you can hear the whole thing in action. Here we go. And another thing I want to call your attention to, because we don't necessarily see these things when we're only playing the guitar, this note bum, has to resolve to bum, but it does only on the open string. And the thumb note is actually a middle note of a chord. Things are turned around, but if you saw this on music paper, boom, boom, that works out like that. So there's a little voice leading thing that I've been fooling around with here. So you might want to throw this bass note in. So that's kind of nice because we get boom, Anything that we can do to make a part sound more like a linear melody as opposed to just plunking a note that fits the chord. Anything we can do to make it sound linear will add to the musical satisfaction. We are almost done learning the arrangement. Let's go on to the next video where I show you a little bit about the form and how to play the ending. All right. Welcome back. All right, so, so far, uh, for She's Leaving Home, I've showed you how to play the intro, which is this uh, arpeggiated thing. This thing, right? So, and so forth. And then we looked at the verse. This thing. And then in the last two lessons, I showed you what I call the chorus. Where that section where we're doing the interchange. What's going to happen is there's going to be, form-wise, we're going to go back and play another verse and another chorus. So the material is exactly the same. So it's... Intro, A section, A section, oh, repeat, chorus, then an A section, then the chorus, and then at the very end, there's an ending, which I'm going to show you how to play now. Let's take it from here. We've done this. Now here's the new, the last piece of new information. This is the ending. B minor bar chord. Then lift the bar, leave the other fingers. Now without squeaking as much as you can, grab the sixth fret 
and and the second string and then you're going to slide down to the second fret and then this is kind of a stretcher of a chord here pinky on the fifth fret and a first finger second fret then you're going to play a bass note all by itself then Let me sing you the lyric. There's a there's kind of a chorus that goes, She's leaving home. Bye. Bye. And then I like to do this intro figure again. I grab this note all by itself, let it ring a little bit, and then. And I do the intro figure again. Let me play this all in order so you, you can hear the pieces come together and make some sense. So. This is going to be the last new little thing I'm going to show you. Okay, so I'm going to do that for you nice and slow. The little ending run, we're just going up a, going up a D major arpeggio, sort of, with a filled in extra note. So open, if you can hammer that, great. If you can hammer that, great. If you can't, you can plug them. Okay, so if you can get that much, you were gonna use the open strings ringing now as a bridge. We can lift our hand off. Still have some sound going. You're going to go up to the 10th fret. Okay. Now 7th fret, 2nd, 3rd, and 4th strings. Make sure you place this well. You might want to practice that because if you miss that, it'll really screw things up for you. And then last note is the 6th string, 5th fret. Okay. Okay, so now I will play it from the bar chords part of this end, this coda, whatever we want to call it. I'll play it straight through to the last note so that you can hear everything in context. I'm going to start a little bit before we're going to go... Uh,
All righty. There you have it. I hope that you enjoy playing She's Leaving Home on your gigs or for your family, friends, and I hope that you enjoy practicing this. And be sure to go slow, even though uh, it may look easy. There are these challenges, landing with the pinky, getting a nice tone. And last note, stepping back from this whole thing, uh, all, the, all the scrambled eggs and stuff that you want to play on guitar, the melody has to sing. That's the most important thing. You can mess up a lot of stuff or maybe not play the arpeggios with the ultimate clarity. That doesn't matter. The, the melody, singing, and touching uh, people's hearts is numero uno. Okay, and with that in mind, I hope that you enjoy working on this one. God bless. <laughs>